Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, as you may see, I'm approaching 400 subscribers. Now, that may not seem a lot to a lot of you, but it is for me, it's a, well, a small recognition because, well, it only seems like a couple of months ago, it is a couple of months ago, that it was only 300 subscribers. So, thank you all for those who have subscribed in the last, well, since the beginning. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I plan to make a lot more videos. Uh, there's one about a Sennheiser digital to analog converter external sound card coming up. There is an Asus Xonar sound card coming up. And I have a lot of other IDs coming up. So thank you for that. Uh, let's head over to the, today's topic. And it's this one. The Sound Blaster G1. So this is it, the Creative G1, or the Sound Blaster X G1. You have to pronounce the X like that. Um, it's a tiny little sound card. It's this size, it's only this big. Um, I have seen external sound cards that are that small, but they're usually USB solutions like a USB stick. And the quality of those isn't that good. So I was wondering, how good is the G1? Now I did a review on the G5 and G6 a couple of weeks earlier, and I was really happy with the G6 because the audio quality of that one was uh, not impressive, but it was really good. The G5 wasn't that good, so if I had to make a recommendation, get the G5 instead of the G6. Uh, also I had some troubles with the volume being right or the left being a bit louder than the other on the G5, so I, well, I didn't like that one that much. I was wondering, how good is it? Now, I tried to do some research. I always do some research earlier when I create a video to see, well, what's inside of this, well, this USB thing or in the USB card. Now, in normal uh, PCI or PCI Express cards, it's really easy. You either screw off the shroud or you just see the components laying out before you. So there's a lot of photography going on there. Uh, but in this case, it's, um, well, it's this, and I'm not going to break it open because I'm going to send it back. I have to send it back. Um, so I have no idea what's in there. In my opinion, it's just a small codec. I think it's a Sears Logic one, not really sure. And that's it. It's just an audio codec. So it's the, the, the digital to analog converters, the analog to digital converters, the head flown amplifiers all crammed into one single tiny chip and it doesn't improve the audio quality that much. And this is what the driver interface looks like. This is the landing page where you can select your device, have a demo, the volume, and what I find interesting is that you can select a device. Now, why would you have several devices enabled? But okay, it's in there. You can select a profile, which is Kind of nice if you want to use it. Acoustics engine, equalizer, scope mode, voice effects. I'll get back to that a bit later on. And the interesting one is the uh, advanced settings with the for these speakers and headphones. Now here you can select the headphones for virtual surround and everything surround, and that's all nice. But the more interesting thing is here you can enable high gain. Now if you have a headphone that has more than 64 to 300 ohms of uh, power that is required, or resistance is the better word, a resistance, then you can enable this. Now I have read reports online that this function, if you have a 300 ohm headset, it will not power your headset enough. So it may say 300 ohms, it doesn't work that good. So maybe 64, I don't have one, so I cannot test it, but these are just reports that I read online. Also here you have a mixer, which is interesting, but let's get back to the voice effects. Now, as with all sound cards that I tested previously, you have these stupid voice effects. Now you can morph your voice into different characters and accents. Now. It may have been cool in 1990, no, it wasn't even cool back then. Maybe it was cool in 1950, but in 2020, this isn't cool creative. Please remove this kind of peep from your drivers. It's idiotic. Because if I enable it, I will sound like an orc. Or maybe like an alien brute. Ha ha ha, I sound like an alien brute. 
male to female. Now, I really think this is so idiotic. Please remove it from your drivers. And these are the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer. Now, as you can see, it gets a good for general performance rating, but there are some minor points. The total harmonic distortion plus noise gets a poor, and the stereo crosstalk gets a poor. The frequency response, which in my opinion is one of the more important ones, as is the noise level and dynamic range and the total harmonic distortion. But the frequency response is in my opinion one of the, well, more uh, impressive ones if you get a good score. It gets a very good, but if I look at the graph, it's on the left side, that's the base side, it's sort of rises, so there's a lot of bass missing there. And then it goes wobbly, and then it goes to 20 kilohertz, and it drops all of a sudden, and even happens before it reaches 20,000 kilohertz. So that means that in the, well, the higher tones, uh, there are some tones missing. Also, the wobbly bit is a bit annoying to me. Um, it, you may not hear it directly in sound, but it doesn't improve your quality. So, would I recommend this sound card? Well, if you look at the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer, it gets a good. Well, it's good is good enough, I think. Uh, it's better than most onboard sound cards that you have from, well, 10, 20 years ago. But these days, the sound onboard sound is not so bad at all unless you have some hissing or popping which i had with my motherboard or you may have some terrible crosstalk or whatever it doesn't function as you want to have uh, also the digital to analog converter and those things isn't that good also the analog to digital converters isn't that good so uh, if you want to have just a bit better just a tiny bit better for your uh, ye olden sound curve from 10, 20 years ago for your onboard sound. This may be an option. Otherwise, if you're looking for a new sound card, this is rubbish. There, I said it. It's rubbish. Um, I think the sound quality, it, it was extremely poor. Um, it wasn't able to drive even my 32 ohms headsets. Uh, either the Biodynamic one I have or the Sennheiser one I have. It just wasn't able to drive it. Uh, also, the audio quality itself, uh, it was all over the place. It wasn't nice to hear. And after about 10 minutes of listening to some music, I had to turn it off. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, you should have been able to equalize and everything. Well, if you turn on the equalizer and all the other settings, this is the result you get from Rightmark Audio Analyzer. Well, it doesn't seem to be that good. So it doesn't improve your sound. Uh, so my conclusion is why even bother? Leave your money at home. Maybe uh, try to save some more money to get yourself a decent sound card. I'm not going to say which one. If you want to have, <laughs> I am going to say it. If you want to have something a bit more cheaper, get an Asus Xonar AE. If you have a bit more money to spend, get an AE5. If you have even more money to spend, get an EVGA NU. But Please leave this one aside. Even if you have a laptop, I think the onboard sound of your laptop is better than this one. So, on that bombshell, now I'm going to say that. Uh, with that last uh, bit of uh, advice, I'm going to leave you. Thank you for now, and I hope to see you soon. Let's head to the 500 subscribers.